Chapter 2 of Popular Culture with John's Story is a very interesting chapter. It can actually be a bit of a difficult chapter if you think about it. In the chapter entitled The Culture and Civilization Tradition, John's Story is going to set up for us a little bit about how culture and popular culture began to be studied. So actually what we're getting here is a bit of a history class more than anything else. We're getting a bit of a review of some of the early traditions of exploring and studying culture. Now we're far moved on from that in our explorations of popular culture today. Today, no matter what realm of society you want to look at, even in history itself, in a very traditional discipline like history, my bachelor's degree is in history, my first degree, even a very traditional uh, discipline like history, uh, even today, uses co popular culture as an important element of understanding what's going on in any particular historical moment. So at this point in time, in 2017, 2018, no, you know, 2020, uh, using popular culture as a series of texts or insight into the, the, the social, cultural, political milieu of the moment is, is very commonplace. But it wasn't always like that. And story gives us some insight into the, some of the early ways that popular culture were, was explored. And what we find out is that it was often looked at as the other to, to things that were good. <laughs> so it was, it was seen to be something that was not good. It was seen to be something that was uh, troublesome and problematic and tied to maybe a decline of culture, uh, being, being something that's less than or less beneficial. And that the understanding of culture in its most pure sense, and I put that in very stark quotation, most pure sense, right? Culture was something that was to be understood understood and belonged to an elite few. And that popular culture was then something that belonged to the others or to the masses, but you know, really lacked uh, the cultivation and the civilization and the beauty of, you know, the, of, of real culture. What I find most interesting about this chapter is the way in which the early story writers, because that's what I'm going to call them, story writers about what is and what, what, what is culture and what does culture do had a very particular agenda and a very particular spin. And it wasn't a, a cultural studies spin, and it wasn't about studying cultural studies or popular culture. And yet, 50 years later, 100 years later, what we find is that the culture and civilization tradition, which they started, Arnold and uh, Levitism, and, you know, like, is now the basis of the foundation of modern day cultural studies and popular culture. Even though, in its earliest form was problematic. It wasn't started for that particular reason. It started the talk and the discussion around it. So how does this connect to children's studies? What's very interesting is the study of children is very similar to this. So if we go back a century and we look at the cultural milieu, if we look at who was interested in studying children as separate from adults, studying children as a, in childhood as a distinct space, what we find is psychology. Now, many of you have noted that uh, you're interested in psychology or taking psychology or even want to be in the career path that involves psychology as it's connected to children. And so your task for this week is going to ask you to go back and look at the foundations of adolescent psychology. And in there, we have a couple big theorists. We have Skinner, we have Watson, and we have Hall. And you can go and pick any one of the three, Skinner, Watson, or Hall. And this is your task. Select one of those three. What do they have to say about children? Actually, let's add a fourth one in there. Let's add Piaget. Let's give you four. Skinner, Watson, Hall, or Piaget. Select one of the four early psychologists interested in adolescent thinking and discuss what were their thoughts on children. I want you in two minutes, two minutes, just a short two-minute video to do this, to come forward and to say, what were their thoughts on children in childhood, A, what inspired those thoughts? So what was the lens through which they were seeing children in childhood? Again, to understand this, you have to understand the social, cultural, political, historical moment in which they are researching and writing and what were children thought of at that particular moment. <laughs> It's a fun exam. I think it's going to be good. I'm looking, for, I'm looking forward to seeing these videos. So you go off now and you have your big week. You know, read what story has to say. Use that as a template to understanding how culture and civilization as a tradition came about because that later allowed for the, the, you know, the, the starting of British cultural studies and the notion of studying popular culture as important, even though that wasn't what the starting thinkers were doing. And I think you may have a similar experience this week when you then go off and study Hall, Watson, Skinner, or Piaget and take a look at their early writings on children and adolescence and adolescent psychology. And what, how, how, how that and that writing, even though it was very agenda-driven, 
has had a massive impact on what we now call children's studies, which you do for a living. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Looking forward to your videos.